This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hello and welcome to Perfect Person, the show where I'm perfect and you're a person. Today, I um, I ordered food uh, and I used a little sort of coupon code that was built into the app. And so I got like 60% off, of like, but it, I had to hit $35 and then I got the under. That's sick. Yeah. So I'm... No, dude, I'm like... That's really thanks. Yeah, that's like really awesome. Well, it's good because I didn't know the deal was going to be there. So you were ready. <laughs> you were ready to drop thirty five dollars regardless. I was ready to pay forty. Yeah, for one delivery, and then turns out I only paid what thirty thirty five. <laughs> am, am I crazy? Am I crazy? Or is food food prices just keeps going up? I'm joined by Zach Cornfield. <laughs> <laughs> I I went and I I went to Cafe Gratitude, yeah. which is the most obnoxious vegan restaurant in LA. I still haven't been. Oh, you're you're missing out, man. Mm. Uh, they they make you order by saying platitudes to yourself. You right. say you don't. You order the I am grateful, so that's yeah. what you say. I am beautiful, whatever. Right. And I got a pasta, delicious. Mm. Twenty one dollars. For, I'm still hungry. That's it. And yeah, if you're still hungry and you're leaving a restaurant, I'm bummed. I'm yeah. like, when it, when it comes out, if the plate's not heavy, I'm usually like, shit. For $21, I was like, yo, this is pricey. But then yeah. again, it's like, okay, healthy vegan food. Like, sure, I get it. Sometimes I'm, I'll eat, like, I'll, put, I'll pack in mass before I go to a nice restaurant. I, so, I munched on a protein bar yeah. in the car after on the right way after. or on the after was the time after because you want the last thing in your stomach to be like the yummy thing you had. Well, I didn't know I would still be hungry miles. I know, but that's why you should have like packed on brown rice <laughs> <laughs> by the pound before you got there. And that way you're like, oh, I'm so stuffed, but I'll have just a little and you eat like the thing and it's nice and tasty. That's why I carry around rice in my pocket wherever I go. Yeah, it's crunchy, but um, Zach, obviously, you know, from the Internet. And if you don't know who he is, I'm surprised how you're here. Uh, Zach, you uh, thanks for coming on the show, man. Hey, man, it is a thrill to be here. Yeah, uh, would have been a thrill to have been invited sooner. No, <laughs> I just really don't know what took so long. Well, I actually think it was very strategic. Yeah, what I was doing and it actually kind of worked. Y you got me wanting it. I I'm here you. on a Sunday. I moistened you up. But not I, only, but that's not why I did it. You but stuck that, me in Greece. <laughs> that was a byproduct of very clever planning. Yeah. But I, which was that I lubed you up. But the the plan was, I was like, if I front load the big three, <laughs> which as Randy put it on the show, was you, Keith, and Becky. Uh -huh. um, if I front load the big three, then I might have, I might burn hot. But then I might. You don't want to blow your load prematurely. I don't want to blow my load prematurely. Thank you. I couldn't have put it better myself. Yeah. I don't want to blow my load prematurely. So that way I was like, well, let me until right before I go on paternity leave, I'll hit him with a, a, the extra sauce. Hit him with it. Yeah. And I'm I'm glad because I know that you had a lot of kinks to get out um, of this show. Bondage for one. If I find out that you have a better soundboard for this show, I certainly do. Oh. Can I tell you something that bums me out to my core? Yeah. So this soundboard is better than what we have at the studio. Then what the fuck? But it's because remember I went through this where I tried to port this board yeah. one for one over there, but the problem is that we have so many more hosts right. that this only has four inputs. Right. So it's like. I, I have a great sitch going on here and it devastates me that I can't <laughs> Every have day this. I come to work and it bums me out. Well, it's just like a little <laughs> less cool. And it's like, <laughs> oh man, like I want the same. Also, I do this a lot with like with the studio. I do this with work too, where it's like, I want my work and home setups to be like almost one for one. So it's like, oh, 100%. I want my computer, my monitor. My, I, mean, I like, I want to have the same ergonomics. I want the same mixer. I want it all to be the same. And it's, it's a bummer that I can't have the same board. At work. Yeah, it's weird. You did paint paint your home a sliver of it to look exactly yeah. like the office. Looks which exactly I thought like the office, yeah. Was weird. Looks like your desk. Yeah. <laughs> and you have a little painting of me yeah. like sipping tea in the background. Yeah. Well I always gotta have like my muse on the wall. <sighs> But Zach, uh, people are calling in and they need help. I we got you know my my fiance is calling in. Should, is she I, calling in? Should, okay? should I take her call? <laughs> I have to sometimes honestly I have to keep checking my phone to make sure that Sarah's not going to labor. And nope, she's not. 
Wait, is she going? Ma- M- is Maggie? Is there a chance that Maggie's going to all She's of a sudden? She's not pregnant. I know, I yeah. I don't know how it works. She'll be going into a laborious, like, I don't know, art class. <laughs> a laborious art class. She's going into work. She's going into labor. Yeah, she's going into labor. Um, but Zach, uh, what qualifies you today on this fine Sunday to answer the people's problems, to help them to give these perfect uh, people their advice? If you have a problem, yeah, I've had it. I've got nothing but problems. Yep. My existence yeah. is a problem. Back pain queen. Back pain. Head pain. Yeah. Head circuits don't totally match up. Sure. I get myself into sticky situations. Mm-hmm. I say things I'm not supposed to. That's right. I have, I'm bad with interpersonal relationships. Workplace scandals noted. <laughs> done it. Right. Whatever you got, mm-hmm. been there, done that. Learn from my ineptitude. That's damn right. You're the people's guy. I'm the people's champion. You get into your test the same way everyone else does. One foot Put at, at a time. time. <laughs> I get into my desert the same way everyone else. I press the button so the door opens automatically and That's I right. slide my body in. <laughs> like a lizard upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I get into my ectoplasm chamber and I let it go. I lay on my thousand dollar crystal heat mat the same as anyone else. <laughs> yeah, are you still? You're, you told me recently you're off the sweat bag. No, I don't have a sweat bag. I have it. I have yeah. a heat mat. I really want an infrared sauna so I, I can really cook. I, there's a little cubby in my backyard mm. that is like perfectly sized for one, and it felt silly to do that because I live in the valley. Yeah, but I'm. I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely thought about it. Well, Zach, uh, let's get into the calls here. As always, listeners, if you like the show, please consider rating and subscribing it on all the platforms. And if you love the show, we got bonus episodes on Patreon and a show called Perfect Person Platinum, as well as a ad-free premium version of this episode where me and Zach played a special little secret game. You're going to want to get over to Patreon. Look, you don't want to end up with tomato on your face. That's right, Zach. You don't want to have tomato on your face. Cherry tomato specifically. Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, now, Zach, people call in and they leave. I get it, smell. Miles. You've told me the premise. <laughs> You just I'm said stalling. it to the audience. I'm stalling. You just said I'm it twice. I'm stalling because I'm trying to get the voicemail up. Uh, don't peek behind my screen. The man behind the curtain. I know. Where's like no Willy, clothes. Willy Wonka. This is a nice sweater you got. I've never seen this one. Thank you. This is a quality ass sweater. Thanks, man. I'm trying to up my fashion game. You've honestly inspired me. I... Why, look at me. <laughs> I, I like <laughs> the outfit you're wearing right now. I look, I look like a the, couch. The coat is cool, though. All right. It's like a Muppet. Honestly, it makes you look kind of swole. Sick. Like, I feel like your coat makes you look thicker, which is really good for you. Yeah. It I kind of, I feel like I look like a, like a, some sort of chair, like a beanbag boy. Yeah. Hey, Miles. I have a bit of a conundrum. Last week, I had the stomach flu, and I, I actually accidentally shit my pants when I trusted a fart. I made my boyfriend throw my pants out. It was at his house. And ever since then, like, whenever we're having, like, sexy time, he won't eat my ass. And I don't know what to do about it. I need your advice. So I chose the cream of the crop for you today, Zach. (laughs) Wow, there's so much to love. There's so much there, but we're going to need some more um, details. She wants the booty munched. She wants her oh, ass we're calling her. <laughs> yeah, we're calling her, Zach. That's how the show works. Oh, that's this is exhilarating. We don't even have a chance to debrief you. No, right? not even even. Hello? Hello! You want your ass eaten, and we're gonna solve that problem for you. I'm here with Zach Cornfeld. Oh my god, thank you. <laughs> we hear you have an ass eating problem, and we need to help you out. Yeah. So yeah. um uh, <laughs> You answered, you said yes so <laughs> genuinely. It really is lovely. So you trusted a fart, which I think is a really quaint way to put a situation that we've all been in. Now yeah. tell me where you're at in your own words. Um, currently we're like in our relationship. What do you <laughs> I mean like describe your problem. So you describe oh. the fart, describe the situation, and then we'll try to help. Yeah, for sure. So I definitely like had the flu wasn't feeling great we were just about to sit down on the on the white couch oh let boy. me add um trusted it should not have <laughs> face went white eyes big i said i need to go i need to go right now <laughs> i ran to the bathroom <laughs> i saw the damage yeah i got right in the shower i yeah. was like this is bad um this is by the way pro move she's done this before yeah you've done this before you've been here before <laughs> 
I, um, I said, can you get me a garbage bag? Like this, there's no recovering from this. <laughs> yeah. I also said, we can never speak of this. Um, but here I am. <laughs> yeah. I mean like, so, and, and your concern is that he's sort of not, um, He's sort of not going on down there and giving you the goods. Going down to Brown Town. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, can you tell me when you're in the heat of the moment, mm. is it like a, ooh, ooh, <laughs> yeah, eat the butt, and he goes, uh-uh, I don't want to, or are you just kind of giving him like you just noticed. the nudge yeah. of like, you know, you kind of yeah, like. Yeah, like I, I kind of just noticed like he's not going for it. But whereas before, it's like an all-you-can-eat buffet. It was voracious. Exactly. Yes. Mm. Interesting. And how long has it been? Um, it's been about a week and a half. I love, by the way, that the amount of ass eating that was going on is like, noticeable, it, it in, is a noticeable week in a week and a half. That it was in <laughs> such a surplus that now we are, yeah. <laughs> we are, yeah. And you're proud of it, and I love it. And, and forgive me, I don't mean to out myself as a prude here, but a week and a half without ass eating, we we're gonna call this a big problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, you called this is an emergency situation. <laughs> yeah, I did. I was just like, you know what? It's it's a Sunday. I've got time. Let's. Let's see what they have to say. Yeah. So I think that I, I'm sorry, one more. <laughs> In the course of a week and a half, how many times should he have eaten your ass? I mean, at least once or twice. <laughs> yeah, so is that yeah, I agree with that. It should what's have been wrong with my life. <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with your life? You fucking rule. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I, I love yeah, so you've noticed that there's a break in the pattern, right? If you're yeah. if you're planning yeah. your day, Zach, focus up. If you're yeah. no, I'm thinking. My <laughs> eyes are, are thinking. Yeah. Focus up, Zach. Um, if you're planning my day mm -hmm. to get my ass eaten once every week and a half ish, and that's not happening, then that's going to be a trouble. Now, I think this maybe needs a one for one conversation because you know why? <laughs> it's too much in the heat of the moment for you. If he's got sort of a strange little something that's going on there, I mean, he had to mm -hmm. have known that that kind of stuff was going on before. You know what I mean? Like he was just kind of put it doing out of sight, yeah. out of mind. <laughs> I, okay. My real advice is yeah. I, I'd maybe give it another week and see if he naturally returns to the water. Maybe hole. that's actually probably better advice, but I have better advice. <laughs> you do. I think what the problem here yeah. is that he doesn't trust that we're squeaky clean. You know, he's saying, yeah, this, this watering hole has been soiled. Yeah. The company ink has been sullied. Sure. Can I trust mm -hmm. dipping my toes in that pool? And so you need to show him. This is graphic. <laughs> you need to show him that undeniably yep. you have the cleanest butt to ever grace this green earth. Mm. So here's what you're gonna do. Yeah. You're gonna make you're gonna draw yourself a bath. Yeah. Miles loves a good bath. Love a tub. It's not just any bath, mm -hmm. it's gonna be a bubble bath. An ass bath. And then you're going to text him and say, hey, can you come in real quick? Yeah. You know those, Um, have you ever seen a crocodile? The way that it's just peeking its head up above water? Yeah, sure. That's going to be your butt. Yeah. And That's honestly, your butt. he may even, as, a, as an added thing, doing some sort of intimate little time in the tub, in the show, that might also mm -hmm. kind of kind of encourage him to be like, okay, I know that all my bases are covered here. We're not going to be trusting yeah. a fart any longer. How do you feel about this advice? Yeah, we didn't get your name, but maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. I, I don't think you need it. I don't um, think you need I like it. it. I like it. Okay, cool. I, I, yeah, I think that it's like maybe just give it another week. Although you, you know, look, give it a week and then do the bathtub. Thing. Give it a week and then do the bathtub <laughs> thing. But or do the sh if you, you get into the shower and say, "Hey, you should join me. I need my ass eaten." <laughs> I mean, he's probably going to get psyched on that. Like that, the opportunity is, it presents itself. A fresh out of the uh -huh. shower is a nice way to freshen up the bum for a two course. Love dinner. It. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for calling in. We hope that, uh, your drought, um, you know, replenishes itself by week's end. Perfect. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. That was really helpful. No problem Get at all. Booty munch. Get that tweet us when it happens. <laughs> no, don't, <laughs> tweet us when it happens. Yeah, but don't, send you an update. Yeah, tweet us when it happens. All right. Like, thanks so much. Use a code. Maybe yeah, say. Maybe say tomato. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. Sick. I think we changed. changed I think we life. nailed it. It was highly graphic. W was it not supposed to be? No, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I just as I was listening, I was like, hmm, this is a lot.
This is intense. And I'm, you know, uh, yeah, not something I have a lot of experience with. Same. Yeah. But you know what they say? (laughs) It's twice in a week and a half. That means that they're munching down. She was like, there's a, there's a divergence from the routine, which is that my ass is eaten every hour on the hour. By the way, there should be a divergence from the routine. You just were. You had the flu. You You shit yourself. You (laughs) You shit yourself. I'm glad you said that because whatever I was going to say was going to be horribly more graphic. Yeah. And I'm glad that I protected us from that. (laughs) I'm going to like maybe believe that. That's like, it's like less, it's less foul, but it's like more horrible. Like it's less bad words, but it's truly gripping. How do you feel about your status as a himbo? Do you think I'm a himbo? Yeah. I mean, I'm enjoying it so far. I, I guess... Is it, himbo is just him, him bimbo, right? It's like I'm like a big, tall, goofy guy, and no, I'm just like a beefcake. You're just like a hot. I'm a beefcake. Yeah. Do you think that I'm a beefcake? We're not the office, Miles. I can say whatever. I want. <laughs> <laughs> We're not the office. I can call you a beefcake if I want. I, I I went into your Discord and I I asked for some topics of conversation. You did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, do you not so know that I, funny. I'm a founding member of the Miles. I'm a mod on <laughs> you. You are not a mod. I swear to God. You're not a mod. I have the gold name. Yeah, you're you're part of the inner circ, inner council. Okay, well. But I, I, that's so funny that you were on the Discord kind of cruising. You're cruising on the Discord for info. Yeah. I, what I, were some of the segments they gave to you? I lurk. You lurk. <laughs> you're a lurker. I lurk time to time. What What do they say to you? Uh, Let's see. They said, hey, Zach, love the tea. Here's what you should <laughs> talk about. <laughs> They said, big fan of Zadiko. Yeah, I love, uh, Zadiko. love what you did there. Morning Blend was my favorite. Okay, I drink it every day, you fucker. <laughs> you drink it every day? Yeah, it's delicious. You t- take the time to steep it or is it in a bag? No, I steep it. You steep it. I mean, I have a coffee routine that's extensive, so I'm guessing you probably have a tea it that It takes that's one extensive. second. No, I mean, for just, sure. You go scoop and you come back in four minutes. Yeah, but coffee's way more involved than that. I'm like doing a whole chemistry experiment. What did your Discord say? They wanted uh, me to ask about your custom keyboard that hasn't come yet. No, it did. It I did. Come. It so took how, fucking forever. How'd that go? I, do, I, have it, I mean, it's right here. How long did this shit... That's an ugly keyboard. That how long you did this, come into my how fucking long did this studio take to come? and you say it's an ugly Let me say keyboard? This. Let me say this. Sorry, it's not some pastel as Etsy fucking shit. He's talking this about is my an keyboard. adorable keyboard. A light just went out. No, I know. Zach, one of the things about this studio that's unlike our office studio is that there's a motion sensor light. <laughs> So, because this used to be a garage. You should get a, um, like a Nerf gun or something. Oh my God. That's a great idea. So you can just pow. That, it's going to be really disorienting for people that don't know. <laughs> I just, the light goes out. I pull out a and gun. Shoot it off the, it off the side. That's a great idea, actually. Yeah. That's a more fun solve than like me going to the electric store and like getting a different oh, switch. Oh no, screw that. Yeah. We a Nerf gun time. where I have to hit the switch. It's just motion though. Yeah. Most, it probably would register. If you get a big enough bullet. Or <laughs> or I just get like anything big, like a bouncy ball that I just throw. Yeah, if you throw a ball. If I throw a ball, well, it's more be fun fine. to go. Pow. Let's take another call here, Zach. People have issues. Let me look at hang on, look at this. Have an issue. Have get a an tissue. Issue. Get a tissue. Hey, how am I doing, by the way? Am I like a good guest? You're nailing it. But like, you're really nailing it. Like as far as like top guests. We'll have to see by episode's end. <sighs> I know it's a tall order. Any, um, any advice on how I can ramp it up? Um, Yeah. Keep on fucking doing your little like, um, you know, dork boy shtick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's answer another voicemail. Hi. So my name is Emery and my problem is pretty succinct. I need you to tell me how to quit being such a little bitch. Because all my friends think I'm an acting like a little bitch. And I need to know how to make a move on this boy. But I need someone to give me the push to do so. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Because I'm a little bitch. Yeah. Uh, You've been called that a lot online. Hi. Hi, Emery. Yeah, I'm here with Zaggy Kornfeld. One of the internet's preeminent little bitches. That's right. I got an expert to solve your problem. Hi. I'm such a big fan. Y'all make me smile every day. Oh, that's very sweet of you. (laughs) This is like 
like the best birthday present ever. It's your birthday? It's your birthday? It is. It is. Oh my god, Emery, we're gonna fucking crush this right now. You yeah. got the birthday magic on your side. Oh, you trying to ask someone out? I heard. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's a mutual. We're pretty confident. We like each other. Thing, gotcha. but we're both little bitches, basically. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So, <laughs> so this is like friend, friend of a friend. Uh, we we had a class together. In college. Can we get a code name for this person? Yeah, you're Emery and this person is... Oh, I need a good code name. Salisbury. Um, Sal. 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 Salisbury. 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 So Salisbury. Like Salisbury steak. Like Salisbury swing? Steak. Steak. <laughs> The Salisbury <laughs> swing. Salisbury. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so you think <laughs> you like Salisbury. You think Salisbury likes you. Yeah. Salisbury's not making a move. No. And tell us a little bit about Salisbury mm -hmm. and what you like about him. He's very kind. Okay, nice. He is funny. Mm. We're both on the Shire side. Okay. We had multicultural education class together. Smarties, which was yeah. very playful. Mm -hmm. Um... I don't know. I like that he's very respectful of other people's intelligence. That's hot. That's super hot. Give me yeah. a king who can look at my brain. <laughs> Thanks for but, like, Thanks. Nothing's Thanks happening. For, Thanks for laughing at you that. Know, Zach was like, giving me nothing. <laughs> how how long okay, how long have you been waiting for the move? <sighs> like a month and a half, two months. And where do you see this person in real life? Like, are you running into each other? Are you still in school or you're out of school? Uh, we are both still in school. We had a class together. Okay. And so we would see each other every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Are you And then on... we'd run into each other on campus. Nice. But are you on texting basis? Uh, we've texted a few times, but it's always about class stuff. Okay. And now can I, okay, mm -hmm. this is the big question. And w when you're afraid to ask someone out, yeah, we need to play out mm -hmm. what is the worst thing that could happen here? Yeah. Worst it, case scenario, you to, and we're going to play it out with via role play. Like, so I want okay, you okay, to text. Okay. I want you to say to me what you're going to text to him. And I'm going to give you the worst case scenario. Oh, God. Well, here's the issue is that I think I'm, I would be better to read the body language in person, but we just left for Christmas and I don't have another class with them. Yeah, that's why the text message of, hey, what's up? We should hang out or something is probably going to be good. But I'm going to give you, I'm going to have you live your nightmare. Hmm. So that way. Oh, and now let's actually imagine, not in a texting conversation, let's imagine you run into him at the student union. He's hanging out there <laughs> doing homework and you walk, you approach. I approach. Yeah. Okay. I'd probably be like, oh my God, hi, how have you been? What do you want? I don't know. I was just wondering if you wanted to like get coffee, something or Whoa, something. Whoa, back off! Maybe. That's my boyfriend. <laughs> Not only do yeah, I'll go get coffee so I can pour it over your head. If I next time I see you in class, I'm gonna look at you and call you stupid. <gasps> Security here. <laughs> We're here to arrest this woman. <laughs> Campus security. Yeah, campus security yeah. is gonna arrest you, dude. Yeah, man. she was harassing me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was pretty so, good. By the way, dude, we mm -hmm. just crushed that improv. That was really good. It was there. really good. I like. I felt like I saw Thank it. You. Yeah. So <laughs> I think. You. So I'm thinking that that's not gonna happen, right? What you're gonna want to do mm. is you're going to want to. By the way, people love to be liked. Yep. Like. Even if it, you, the person says no, if you ask them out in a okay. cool way, and I've said this before, but I'm going to throw it up a second time, asking someone out and having them say no isn't the end of the battle. You can still show up to their house. No, I'm just no. kidding. No, no, <laughs> but no, you don't show up to their house. But my point being that like you can ask someone say, out. That sounds scary, but that's no, scarier. Obviously, you can, ask, <laughs> you can ask somebody out and they can be like, oh, no, I'm not interested. And then your reaction can convince them that you're actually really cool. And then maybe later down the okay. line that could open something up for them. So well, here's how this will work. Like they're going to, uh, you're going to go up and be like, Hey, what's up? Like, I'd love to um, get coffee with you sometime. Coffee's a cheap date. It's cheap. It's fun. It's flirty. He gets the cappuccino and you get the cinnamon. Now he could say, Oh, sorry, I'm not interested or whatever. And you just go, okay, cool. No problem at all. I just figured I'd ask. And then you walk away and that's, a good interaction. That's probably the worst case scenario that's okay. going to happen. 
Yeah. That's doable. I, I can do that. I, yeah. I was going to go more and more strong, but I like, I think that's a really good plan. Yeah. It's college. So I figure okay. like that's probably like the lowest effort you can put into something is like, let's like hang out and get coffee. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, I, what's well, your and, okay. So before, when I asked the worst case scenario, it's more like, if like, are you guys intermingling friend groups other yeah. than class? So it's like, if you were to feel embarrassed, would you then have to run into him in a way that would make you uncomfortable? That's, right. that's kind of what I'm trying to get at here before we go further. Yeah. Mm, not really. We don't have similar circles. Sick. Then you got nothing to lose, girl. Let's fucking go Hell for it. Hell yeah. Here's right. my idea. <laughs> I want Miles to tell me if this is good, if this is bad. I'll tell also, you. Also, you tell me because you're not going to see him for a little bit, but I think you go, you text him right now. Yeah. And you say, so you're going to no. wish me a happy birthday or what? Whoa. That's whoa. That's like so flirty. That's a strong move. That would make me like nervous because it's so like, baller. If though. He doesn't respond. Well, it's baller unless he doesn't respond, and then it's like, That's well, then you it. know. Yeah, I guess then you know, and then you know, <laughs> and if he responds, then you, then you go, then he goes, oh my god, haha, ha, happy birth. This is what I think is gonna happen. Yeah. You gonna wish me a happy birthday or what? Uh -huh. He goes, oh my god, haha, ha, happy birthday. You wait. And then he, he'll probably say, like, what are you doing for it? And then you can say something of like, I'm home now. Making out with you. <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm back, when I'm back, maybe we can celebrate. Celebrate my birthday in January. <laughs> A month later <laughs> when I come back from winter break. That is funny. I like where the fire is there, Zach. But I'm gonna set, I'm gonna put that it's fire. Fiery. I'm gonna put that fire in a different place. And here's what it is. I kind of love. A, this is another soft launch to a date. If it's too scary to ask him to coffee, Ooh, okay. tell him you're going to coffee. Hey, <laughs> I'm going to be, get, I'm going to be doing work at this coffee shop at 4 PM Eastern. You're, you can join me if you want. I'll be over there for a while. And then he's like, okay. oh, that's kind of cool. It's not really a date ask, but it's like a let's get to know each other better ask, which often in college, if you know somebody well, then you know that maybe you could kiss. That would be the goal. Yeah. So I think that being like, <laughs> I'm going to be at this coffee shop or I'm going to be in the student union or I'm going to be, you know, swimming laps in the local pool. Anything where it's going to be you <laughs> there for an extended period of time that's going to allow him the opportunity to show up. Lubricate the social interaction. Hell yeah. You're going to start responding to his Instagram stories with funny witticisms. Oh, God. Z Zach, I couldn't have said it better myself. He posts a story of his mom. Nice mom. <laughs> he posts a story fact, of wait, his dog. Can you pull up his Instagram right now and tell yeah. me if he has any stories posted? Describe them and we're going to give you a perfect thing to write. How do you feel about a story like... Story likes are worthless. Okay, I thought okay. that, but my friend- You're was, talking about the heart or an emoji? No, the heart, the heart. I think it's worthless. I think so too, but I had a friend that just was like- the heart? But I think no, you can just like double tap and you like the story. But I don't see anything okay. of that. But I think that it notifies you that there's like, oh, you're like, oh, there's a little heart there. Let's try it. Well, you, this isn't going to work with you because you have a bajillion followers. No, I'm going to heart you, bro. Oh, you're going to heart mine. It doesn't show up in my feed. Yeah, it just well, shows so up the under the story. And, so I guess an emoji as a heart is kind of great. Responding to a story with an emoji is pretty flirty. Now, I have been checking. He has been watching my stories because... I've been talking. Oh, it's but so on. It's so fucking on. You don't even know this. Emery, on. it's so on. But wait, he doesn't have anything posted right now? <laughs> he he does has it. He posts like once every like third moon. Uh, like, once every third moon. Where's the moon at right now? <laughs> yeah. So I think that I mean, if he's watching your stories though, he's primed. Emery, here's the thing that you don't realize is that you've already won. Yeah, you're already... he, he is so fucking in it. And also, if I know college boys, they're just like so elated to be liked in any way whatsoever. You yeah. have nothing to worry about. The power is in your hands. Go get it, girl. I think that as a college boy, I don't I don't know that I would have said no to a date with anyone. Anyone. I would have just been like, sure. Who cares? Let's do okay. it. <laughs> like Especially if it's a coffee date, I would have gone, even if I didn't like, and he likes you because he's been watching, he's been peeping those stories. But like, I probably would have said yes to anybody just for fun. Have you ever asked somebody out and had it gone horribly wrong? You? Me? Yeah. Not horribly wrong, no. No. 
You haven't? I'm asking Zach. Zach, have you? Yeah, I mean, almost definitely. What What happened? What was it like? Um, was your approach bad? Was her, the situation yeah, bad? No. Um, her boyfriend said, what are you doing? And then they called <gasps> campus security on me. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're at the student then, union. And yeah, then for sure. Campus on me. security? Uh, no, I don't know that I've had it go bad. I've just had bad dates. I don't think I've had it go bad. Yeah, it's like, because that part isn't the painful part. The painful part's like being on a bad date. Where right. like, you're like, oh, I wish you had said no. Like, this sucks. Like, clearly we don't have any chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know I, mean? I do have a mild confession. You have a confession? Okay, what up? Well, I haven't ever really been the person to ask. Oh, yeah. That's fair. That's, That's fine. That's okay. That's normal, I think. like you're Unless you're... it's been like a mutual thing. Like, yeah. we both already knew. No, for sure. Well, little, little friend date happening thing. And then nothing really, you know. Well, I don't know that I've ever like asked. To ease your worries, though, that's the thing, though. I think in college, the the friendship uh, friendship relationship diaspora is really so, like, the line is very thin. Like, I feel like a lot of people I did okay. in college, I was just like, oh, yeah, we're, like, friends hanging out. And then all of a sudden, we're like, oh, what if we, like, hook kissed? <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, oh, now we're, like, kind of pseudo dating, and that's kind of great. You know what I mean? Like I For the record, normal. I feel like Hi. I asked out very few people in college. I just would like yeah. flirt with them exactly. and then we'd be at a party together. Right. And it's like, oh shit, tonight's the night. Yeah. And Zach's naughty <laughs> ears. <laughs> from, what it, from what it sounds like, you had like a naughty little time in school. I wasn't that naughty. You kind of talk about being I a little naughty that. boy. Yeah. I you're a little stoner naughty boy. Doing bong rips and slamming ass. <laughs> <laughs> But Emery, um, I think you're going to do great. Um, but just remember that the worst okay. thing that can happen is you never see this fucking loser again. You know what I mean? That's so true. If he doesn't if he like, like you, you, he's a fucking loser, he's a dork. idiot, dorkus. That's right. But if he does like you, invite <laughs> us to the wedding. We probably won't come. We'll love to, we'd love to be there. Zach will be there with Bell's on. <laughs> okay, I can do that. I can do that. Thanks Thank for, you for your thanks help. Thanks for calling in, Emery. You have a great one. You as well. Look Happy into the mirror and roar. I'm not a little bitch. I'm not a little bitch anymore. <laughs> Bye, Emery. <laughs> Bye. Another happy customer, Zach. I think we did great. Um, Zach, we've got one final call here from somebody. Santa. That, that it's Santa that needs to know whether to break up with their boyfriend or not. Oh, the answer is then yes. <laughs> if and you're asking. We're just going to give him a call and have him describe it. Hello? Whoop, whoop. Boyfriend police. Ow. We're here to call you back about your problem. Oh, my God, Miles. Thank you. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Boyfriend deputy Zach Kornfeld here on the scene, ready to help you with your boy problems. Oh, my God. Hello. <laughs> I brought Zach, my deputy, here because we heard that you had an issue. Now, first of all, is your boyfriend in the house or can you talk? No, I am. I'm isolated. He's not even here. Okay, good. <laughs> Tell me work. about this guy. Yeah. Okay, so we met on Tinder. He's the he's my first boyfriend. I'm almost twenty one. Okay. Um, been dating for thirteen months, and whenever I PMS, I just get angry at him. Sure. And I'm just like, mm, is this what a relationship should be? So now. Married men, I need your help. Well, Zach's not married yet, so I'm a little bit more advanced than him. But go, go, go on. <laughs> Miles is two life stages ahead be. of me. I look up to him. He's my mentor. That's right. About to have a baby and a married. Continue. I, I know. I know. But now I need some advice because, um, sadly, I was going to break up with him last week because oh. I was just kind of over it. Yeah. But then my parents talked me out of it because they're like, it's the holidays. <laughs> Oh, no, I don't that know. is so, I mean, look, you, I don't know what we're going to say in a second after you describe your issue in depth, but if your parent, your parents have no business telling you to break up or stay Counterpoint, if I learned anything from Love Actually, it's that you can't be single over the holidays. That's right. Yeah. Over the, over the holidays is the best time. Now, okay. So what, are, what are you mad at him about and why were you going to break up with him before and what stopped you? Okay. Well, I called your podcast once before because we, he forcibly lived with me for half the summer because his lease ran out and he didn't tell me until two days before his lease ran out. He lived with me from mid-July to the end of August. And so he lived with me at my apartment and then I had to move out, 
move out of my apartment, move into my house for this year. I helped him like pack up his entire apartment, take it down to his parents' house, which is three hours away from the college and like the town we're at. Then I moved in August. He did not help me pack or unpack anything because I didn't tell him to help me or like give him a specific thing to unpack. So that's like strike number one. I, I was like, I really want to break up with you, but I don't want to because you're pissing me off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Step one, you're pissing me the hell off. Yeah. And so now, um, four months later, he's still pissing me off and he likes to just get on my nerves. And I'm just like, literally just shut the fuck up and sit the fuck down. Break up. What, <laughs> what do you like about Yeah. What him? do you like about it? It sounds, by the way, break up. You're 21. You have so many um, other 20. people to date. You're 20. Yeah. Uh, I turned 21 in like two months. What? And can um, I ask though? Cause I mean, yes, you shouldn't be with this person. You shouldn't be with someone who pisses you off. Yeah. But, are there a lot of people who piss you off or does he piss you off? Like, what does he do that pisses you off? Yeah. Um, he like, he doesn't let silence happen. He just makes like random noises just so there's no silence. And I was like, can we just please sit in silence and watch TikToks or like watch movie or you play your video game? And yeah. he just like, won't. <laughs> You just dislike this person. I, yeah. <laughs> you have to get out of this relationship. <laughs> You're being like, yeah, like he just like everything about him is just a little worm slug making noises. <laughs> like get out of this relationship. By the way, no one is holding you at gunpoint to stay with this person. Get out of there. I, I'm also someone who's incapable of being in silence. And yeah. and that's just something my partner needs to know. <laughs> yeah, no, right. Like, and like if, we, if she didn't like yeah. that, then we wouldn't last. Yeah. If it was the right person, they wouldn't annoy you by existing. <laughs> word i really needed that <laughs> and, and but by the way though like i don't think that this per from what i'm hearing yeah this is not like this person is some evil no mastermind like you guys are just not compatible and no. that's okay yeah and so while these things yeah. are pissing you off it sounds like from what you've described so far these are problems like within you and I don't mean to say that you have a problem. Yeah, I just mean that he is whatever he is mm -hmm. is triggering something within you, and so I would just try and try and be kind to him when you let him down. And this is kind of a, a rule for everybody, but you don't need a reason to break up with someone. You can just break up with them. Like if I feel like there's a lot of people that are like, oh, I don't know, like it, the relationship's fine. He's really nice. Like he's a nice person, and we do have fun together. But I just kind of want to break up, and it's like, well, then break up. There's no like if if you know th in your head that there's part of you that isn't feeling it, yeah. like then you're not feeling it, and that's cool. That's you don't fine. need evidence. This that's isn't what I mean. court. You, like you can just be like, I'm done with the thing. Like you know what I mean? I think that people feel like they need to prove to everyone else like why they did something. And it's like, no, we're just like human beings existing on this planet. You can just leave. Can you, um, can, we're going to bleep it, but can you give us your boyfriend's name? Okay. okay. All right. And then we're not going to bleep it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Isn't that annoying? Isn't that annoying? Okay. Let's get something clear here. <laughs> you said those are his initials. Isn't that annoying? You hate this guy, but there's nothing he did wrong. It doesn't sound like, unless, unless you have a story that you're not telling us, but it seems like you're just done with the relationship. Yeah. I've been done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. And then I would say, like, if you continue to find yourself in relationships where people are pissing you the fuck off, like, maybe we can talk again and see if there's anything we can do about that. But for the time yeah. being, it seems like y'all just not compatible. Yeah, that's um, right. I, was gonna I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll just switch sides, you know? Hey, hey sounds, get into it. Now's the time to do it. Yeah. That's our official You're, advice. You were about to say something, Zach? Well, look, I think that um, this young boy, this young man may be crestfallen. Heartbroken. Yeah, he might be. And so I was going to just offer this real quick if you want to play this for him. Yeah. Ding dong. Zach and Miles from the podcast Perfect Person. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you're getting dumped. Yeah, your girlfriend brought you in here because turns out you annoy the crap out of her. But don't worry. It has nothing to do with you. You're fine. I guess. We just... You're just not compatible. Keep on making those noises, brother. And hey, next time you're going to get them. You're going to find somebody that doesn't care that you make weird slug noises. <laughs> Enjoy your sluggy life without her. So you can just play that for him. So and just play that for him. It kind of softens the blow. Yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for calling in. You have a fantastic evening and break up with your boyfriend tonight. It doesn't matter this around the holidays. Literally, like, just get it over with. Your parents don't know anything. There's no good time to break up with someone, I find. Right? Am I wrong, Zach? Uh, Tuesdays work. Tuesdays are good. Yeah. Yeah. All oh, right. Good word. Have, um, happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you. Thank happy you. holidays. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Zach, thanks so much for doing the show, man. We're at our final segment. Oh. It's like already. Yeah, I feel like I was just getting lubed up. You're just getting lubed up, and right when, right when we're lubed up, right when we're about to go in, that's when we edge. <sighs> this is a segment that Zach's looking surprised to hear because he's never heard an episode of the show. I haven't gotten to the end. <laughs> <laughs> I liked what I heard. It's a segment we like to call "Get Real." where we forced a genuine moment in an effort to learn more about each other and ourselves. Uh, Zach. It's a nice song. Thanks, man. Uh, this is you at the piano. Tickling yeah, the, this is all original music. Tickling the ivories. The chimes, the piano. I just wow. made all these. Yeah. I'm sort of a musical icon. You're holding out. Of sorts. Now, Zach, um, you're someone who I actually feel like is very open with your emotions. This segment is actually, it's designed to uh, have people kind of open up a little bit. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, I know, but I feel like you're an open fucking clam. Wide open, baby. As it can be, you're, uh -huh. you're a little open clam. I'm a little clam. You're a little clam, but... Um... <laughs> you're searching. Does it scare you to think about being dead? Hmm. It makes me a little sad. Yeah, sure. I think that I've been operating from a fear of death for a long time. I, I big time, I'm afraid of death. Um, I, I always think actually that making art in general is something of a subconscious effort to cheat death. Yeah. If you can make something that's bigger than yourself, yeah, then you can extend your life in a way. Yeah, you're, you're gonna want to loop that song. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've got a little more to go. Uh. Yeah, yeah I agree there's with a that. little bit of immortality there. Yeah. Um, but then within that is also an ego that I think you do need to get over mm -hmm. and realize that that should not be the purpose of creation. It shouldn't be to get attention from others. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't have kids yet, right? I think that when I am there, then there will be a fear of, you know, not being there to experience different moments. Sure. At the moment, I mean, if you told me that I were that I was gonna die, yeah, I think I would just feel regret and regret over things that I haven't done. Yeah, that's interesting. I um, I saw this. I mean, there's like these interviews they did with people who are like a hundred plus years old. Yeah, and the thing that they all said was just like, I wish I worried less. Like the regrets that they the regrets that they have weren't like things. They were just like I, everything was fine, and I felt so worried all of the time. Um, hmm. Which is really interesting. I mean, like, I hope I fucking make it to 100. But no, the, the thought of death really does. It, it fills, me, fills me with anxiety. But I think it's just because it's such an unknown. And I think for people who have, like, religion that's very concrete to them, it's clear. But for me... Oh, I... I No, I'm very confident that as soon as I'm done, it's lights out goodbye. Really? Yeah. And that, to me, the idea of being confident about that would make me more scared than being like, who knows? Yeah. Which, well, like... If I'm if I'm wrong, then I'm gonna burn in hell, <laughs> and that ain't fun. No, and like obviously, like I don't believe that like there's a hell, but like I just think. I oh, don't so know. you just think there's a nice little fluffy place for, the, for the good people? Or like you fucking burn out, and then you're just like a fucking tree. That sounds nice. Or like the thing that gives me hope when I'm lying anxious at night is that. Um, and by the way, I don't fucking know. Obviously. Unless I do, because I'm a prophet. Sent by Josiah. No. <laughs> I think that, like, uh, the thing that brings me help and joy is that, like, science... People say lights out and it's done. Uh -huh. To me, science is magic. The idea that you are... There's something inside you that's creating a personality. Who the fuck knows what it is? Maybe it's your brain. Maybe it's all that stuff. That stuff's going to decompose in some sort of way. The cells are going to change, and it's going to become something else. Matter cannot be destroyed or created. So it, in right. one way or another, you will continue on. It's just right. not going to be your consciousness. It, there is, like, electricity leaving your body and protons and neurons, and it won't necessarily be you. But, like, to me, that it can be magic, too. It is a stoner thought. Whoa. But that's why we do the segment. Can I give you a, a, a more 
true fear of mine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know if this is too sad, but I, no, no, I, 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 I I'm think I'm less afraid of death yeah. and more afraid of losing a quality. Thank you. Uh, losing a quality of life. Yeah. Oh uh, my God. With with yeah. my chronic pain, there's a real fear yeah. that I have hope that it will take a turn for the better, but there's a fear that it will take a turn for the worst. Yeah. And getting to a place in my life where pain becomes insurmountable, yeah. or medicine stops working, or you know, fill in the blank, that to me is more terrifying. Mm-hmm. And so, I don't think about it actively, actively, but. That fear, True. fear of death, I think all of those can be motivators to realize that you only have the present. Yeah. There's no such thing as the past. Mm-hmm. There's no such thing as the future. There's only now. And so you have to ask yourself every day, am I making the most of my now? Do I enjoy my now? That's mm-hmm. all that life is. Yeah. No, I, t- I totally agree. I mean, I... Uh my mind when you said that goes right to my brother uh, died of brain cancer right? right and uh i i mean brains are really interesting and it is sort of fascinating how uh as his tumors got bigger and at the end of his life you kind of like it almost is like you revert to being a baby in some ways mm. he lost the ability to talk and then he lost the ability to use all of his limbs and then like that that part of it is very scary to me yeah. and i think that like the interesting part <laughs> it gets funnier every time. <laughs> but um, like, I am afraid of death, but yeah, I agree with you where that part of it is like, oh, you know, to, to have your loved ones be around you and to have you inside your body not necessarily know what's what, that, yeah, that's a scary thought. I imagine that was, I mean, <laughs> it's hard for so many reasons, but yeah. also seeing that at a young age. Oh, yeah. You were in high school? Yeah, I was seven, uh, six, seven, 17. 17. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, I think it like it affected me in a lot of different ways uh, that I'm definitely still processing. But I think that it. Um, I mean, I've said this before, but it, I think it gave me a great, um, a, a great like energy in my life where I'm like, I am unbound. I am not bound mm. by illness. I am not bound by being trapped in my own brain, but not being able to talk. I'm not bound by having to go to all these appointments. I'm not bound by, you know, so many things. So I should live boundlessly. Like if I'm going to not, if I'm going to have the health and stuff like that, then I better fucking use it. And I think that I feel that I've done that in many ways. I mean, I'm 29. We were talking about this a second ago, but it's like, I feel in a lot of ways that I've speed run many things of my life joyfully. Not that I'm, I've jumped in the too soon, but I'm like, I'm trying to eat it all up while I can because you know things happen so it's like that's why it's like yeah fuck yeah I've got like this kid on the way I'm married I've got a you know great job thanks for that by the way and uh I've got uh you know this show which I'm building out so I think that like I think about that stuff all the time where I guess that's the the positive nice spin on it is that yes we've got this death stuff on the way but you only got one shot you only do not miss your chance, chance to blow. blow this opportunity comes once in a lifetime lose yourself lose yourself Thanks for doing the show, man. You think that segment's funny? It's heartbreaking isn't and that, beautiful. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah. It's not funny, though. It's great. Sometimes it's funny. Uh, not today. Not today, but that's fucking the beauty of it. That's beautiful. We, I mean, uh, but honestly, it's like, yeah, we talked about grief on the thing for a long time. It's nice. Hey, man. Happy to be here. Thanks, man. Can't wait to come back. I'm going to be the first post-paternity leave guest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna become a, What's up? It's the Zach Hour. I'm the new, I'm the new Will, guys. Wow. If you will it. Wow. I can be back. Will versus Zach. Comment below. Hashtag Zach Sweep did not go as according to plan. Though, Honestly, so. I bet you Will's better at this than me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would probably rather listen to the Will Hour. He's a little sweet. enough of my fucking voice. Um, but uh, Zach, uh, yeah, thanks for doing this. this my pleasure. Blast. Uh, where can people find you? Obviously, they probably already have. Just Google me, you dumbass. Google his little ass. If you're like, where do I find that? You yeah. know how to, I, I don't need to baby you. You know what the hell it is. I have a movie podcast talking about movies called Guilty Pleasures. Yeah, dude, go fucking peep Guilty Pleasures. That's the that's the real gold. It's a great show. It's a good one. I'm real proud of it. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good one. That's a real good show. Then that tripod bullshit. <laughs> We're farting that fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, everybody. We'll uh, do all the shit. And um, remember that perfection is only a call away. Hold up. 
That was a HeadGum Podcast.